Ahoy, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Screamin' Pirate EDC. Today, we're gonna be doing the very first Plunderer Plank of 2023. Uh, now, this one is exciting. So I am filming this in early January. This is not gonna come out until February. Uh, it may come out late January for you guys for the Null Knives Corbin Grace. Now, I've had the pleasure of having this knife uh, just in my pocket and just flipping it and just really taking a look at it. You guys know I love prototypes. And yeah, this one's kind of cool. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys. So as per usual, let's go over a few specs, get those out of the way. So we're looking at a 7.2 inches overall. Uh, the cutting edge is 2.9 inches. And then we're looking at an M390 on the blade, 4.2 on the handle, and all the specs you're gonna see, you're gonna say 3.8 ounces. That is for the inlay versions. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure, guys. This one with the zirconium on the backspacer and the clip comes in at just over four. So the zirconium is gonna add a little bit of weight as it always does, but just to be transparent with you guys. So we have that out of the way. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Let's go ahead and look at some of the variations. So as I said, this is the zirconium option. So this is, let me see here, guys. A bead blasted handle, belt satin blade. You can see those beautiful grind lines. I'm a sucker for them. Zirca zirconium, zirconium guys, zirconium clip and backspacer and zirconium on the pivot, okay? Very, very cool. This is the most expensive one as of right now in the listing. This comes in at 375. Now, there has been another option that has come up in the Facebook group for Null Knives that is this with a, with a fat carbon uh, or a marbled carbon fiber inlay. That one will be closer to 400, if not a little bit over. After that, we have one that's just a static washed, which is blasted and tumbled on the handle. And then everything else is stone washed or that same finish. And then there is a green micarta or a black micarta. Now the black micarta has a PVD handle. The green micarta has the bead blasted handle. Those are coming in at 355 for the green, 365 for the black micarta, and 325 for the just standard titanium stone washed blade. Have all that out of the way, when is the drop happening? I mentioned it in my first impressions. It's going to be February 3rd, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm gonna have a pop-up on the screen. I'm gonna have it in the description. You guys, I'm gonna remind you a hundred times for this, okay? Now, all that stuff is out of the way. What I think is truly important are the changes gonna be made and some of the things I think about the knife. Now, normally I do some size comparisons first, but I really want you guys to see this, okay? So, some of the changes that are gonna be made. The blade out here, right? Where this, where the Tanto edge, guys, the, the long edge here, as it were, that's actually going to be brought out, let me look here, by two millimeters, okay? A little bit longer there. The jimping on the spine back here is going to be extended both directions, both out and back towards the handle, okay? The lock bar access, I'm gonna to try to get that for you guys right through here. That like jimping and whatnot is gonna be a little bit deeper, a little bit easier to use, okay? And all of these are changes that Brandon Corbin and Sean over at Null Knives have told me. And then the big one, and this is the big one for me, you know what guys, I'm not even gonna show you the knife, I'm gonna show you on the paper, the paper that I received, okay? the ramp is going to be shortened, all right? The reason I'm showing you this is because my primary gripe with this knife is something I showed in my first impression. When I go, and it's much easier if I show you this way, guys, when I go to disengage the knife, this looks like it's up on the ramp, right? And it jiggles shut. Anything farther back from that, so if I'm here, so you see how it wiggles back that way? by them shortening the ramp, it's gonna, it's not gonna do that anymore, okay? So all that's good things. Now, stuff that I noticed that I mentioned that, I mean, they may or may not do what I suggest, it's up to them. 
Uh, I definitely want them to shorten the clip here, okay? It's a little bit big. These corners right back in here, I wouldn't call them sharp. I would just like them more chamfered like the rest of the knife is, okay? Um, those are gonna be my two big things on this knife. Also, when I say the blade is a little, and I mean a little close to the spine back here, my finger is not touching when I do this. If I physically take my finger and I push way down in there, I can barely get my finger to touch the blade. It's not that big of a deal. It's just something I mentioned to them about a possible change. All right, all that's off the table. Let's do some size comparisons. I know you guys probably care more about the size comparisons and uh, in and out of pocket and action and that than all of the other stuff I've been talking about. <laughs> so first up, let's go ahead and grab one that has a blade very similar and one that was mentioned to me. This is going to be the Civivi Thug 2 by Matthew Christensen. So if you look here, look at that blade shape. You see how that blade shape is very similar with that Tanto? I just want you guys to see an extreme Tanto next to the other one. Very, very nice. After that, let's grab another Tanto and I'm gonna try to grab as many as I can so you guys can see other Tanto examples next to the Grace. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 Tanto. So you see how that Tanto is just much more straight with like a short out there, that blade out on that swedge. And you have basically the opposite on the Grace, which is kind of cool actually. All right, after that, Let's grab uh, the Vero Engineering Impulse. Now, this knife is significantly bigger, but it is a good example of a Tanto next to it. All right, got that one out of the way. Now, let's start diving into some more what I would consider production customs. Maybe that's the best way to put it. First up, super popular Tanto, especially right now. This is the Chavez, I believe this is the Liberation. This is, now this exact one is the group knife from 2022, but there you go. Chavez is known for his Tantos. Wanted you guys to see a nice compound grind next to another compound grind. And then finally, whenever you mention uh, production customs, guys, there's two names that always come to mind for me personally. It's going to be Matthew Ware and Brian Brown, especially right now. And uh, a big one from last year is going to be the Matthew Ware Lucas P. Okay, there you go next to each other. Just wanted you guys to understand overall size if you do have the Lucas P. And then finally, we're gonna grab two Brian Browns and do these next to him because guys, I mean, production customs, you, you, if you mention that, you're mentioning Brian Brown, that's just how it is right now in the knife world, guys. This is the Jaeger, okay? So this is more of just a size comparison next to the Jaeger. I will be bringing up the Jaeger again in a little bit, but I wanted you to see this. And then finally, this is the Raptor from Brian Brown. All right, guys, so now that I've shown off everything in size comparison, let's talk about my personal thoughts on the knife. Now, let's go ahead, like I always do, and talk about ergonomics. I wear a large glove, so as you can see here, I fill out that entire knife, okay? I can choke up a little bit here, but it's really not enough space for my finger. I am filling out that entire knife with a large glove, just so you know. Now, there is a lanyard, okay? So if you do put a lanyard back there, you could have a pinky hanging off if you have a bigger hand than that. Deployment. Deployment is really where this knife shines to me. So thumb stud with my dominant hand, right-handed guys, reverse flick. And then if I take left-handed, thumb flick, and this is where I'm surprised. I can usually do it. Ooh, guys. Hey, there we go. So reverse flick with the left hand as well, which is really nice. Um, I think the detent for opening is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And I really like the detent here, guys. Um, but I would say the detent is mm, about a medium detent, guys. I wouldn't say it's hard. I mean, my wife tends to have a hard time with something like a Chavez, guys, and she can open this one up with the thumb stud. Uh, chamfering is fantastic. I mentioned the only place that I really had something I noticed, which was back here. And uh, not that big of a deal. The only jimping you are gonna find is up here on the spine and then a tiny, tiny bit on that lock bar. Okay, guys, 
We have T8s all around, which is super cool, and a compound grind. So we have a hollow grind through here and a flat grind out here. Uh, I have been using it. I have been cutting with it. I'm in love with this knife, guys, as far as like cutting performance. Oh my gosh, where'd my cardboard guys go? All right, guys, found a piece of cardboard. Uh, here you go. So that's using the flat, you know, that full flat grind. And if I pierce all the way through, you can see I'm in the, the hollow. Really, really nice. Works out really well. I really like it. And then finally, guys, in and out of the pocket, no problems at all. Um, I'm not sure if it's that exact length on that clip, but it works beautifully. So what are my thoughts on the knife? I think that once they make the changes here and they get that detent just right, and I don't think the knife will ever fall shut. I think it's going to be a wiggle. Um, but I think once they get that dialed in, guys, with the contoured tie and everything here, this competes with Brian Brown's for me. This competes with the Jaeger and the Raptor for me. Um, I've always heard good things about Corbin's. Uh, you guys know I love uh, Null Knives. The, the Voodoo and the Raiden are fantastic, but this, guys, is a whole different level. It's really cool seeing something that's so close to this custom just kind of come to life. And uh, yeah, it's super cool. I really like it. This is definitely a plunder, guys. 100% a plunder for me. But this is something that I think you should really consider picking up. I like the price. I like it under $400. I don't know which one I'm going to pick up. It might be this exact one. But all in all, guys, this is a winner. If you like it, let me know down in the comments and uh, let me know which variation you're going to pick up. And hopefully, I'll catch you on the next one. Hey, hey, giant piece of cardboard, okay? 